Hello everyone, this is Tim's New York Giants Straight Talk, powered by Online Big Blue LLC, and a welcome to the party. I'm a little late to the show because we have the new pup and he's just driving me insane. Want to talk about the Saquon Barkley contract and potential Saquon Barkley trades, which are non-existent. Want to talk about, about Dory Jackson for a minute. Also want to talk about the Daniel Jones restructure. Oh, just that, just saying that just gives me shivers. You want, you want to scare somebody? Don't have them watch The Exorcist. Just walk up behind him and go, Daniel Jones restructure. Uh-huh. Actually, that's more. Uh, it's just a scary word. It's just, it's just, it's just ill-conceived. Uh, could it potentially happen? Yes. But let's get into Saquon Barkley because twi- Twitter is driving me fucking insane again. And I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I should stay off Twitter. But for all the people and all these giant fans and all these content creators that are in the know, we're going to trade Saquon Barkley as part of the Chicago deal to get the first round pick and draft Caleb Williams. Okay. That's in practicality. It sounds like a uh, pretty good idea. Some minor flaws in this, in this theory. Saquon's not under contract. Saquon hasn't been tagged. Saquon has to sign the tag if he does get tagged before you could even consider trading him because you can't you can't trade a player if he has not signed his tender. Sorry. So Saquon would have to agree to the trade to Chicago and have a contract already in place before you could make this happen. Because Saquon Barkley, for what everyone wants to believe, is not under contract with the Giants. And people are like, well, there's only leverages he could sit out. He could sit, he, he, and he's not going to do that because he doesn't want to be a Le'Veon Bell. Because Le'Veon Bell did that, and, and look, look what happened to him with the Jets and his contract and, and everything else. It, it was horrible. Okay, yeah, he didn't get as much money as he should have. But you forget, and a lot of people forget about this in reference to Bell's contract. He was four years, uh, 52 million. 27 million of that was guaranteed at signing. So he actually got more money than Saquon Barkley was offered by the Giants in total guarantees and guaranteed at signing, Bell did. <laughs> you know, guys, there's this thing. I don't want, I, I don't want to point this out. I want to bring this up. It's called Google. You can look this stuff up. It's not that difficult. And is, is, could Saquon Barkley potentially be traded? Yes. But here's the issue. He has to agree <laughs> to this. <laughs> you can't just trade a guy that you do not have under contract. He would have, and I'm going to say this slow. He has to agree to the contract. He, first, he's got to basically agree to the trade by agreeing to the contract. Then you may trade him. You cannot trade a player who A, is not under contract, who is not tagged, and who has not signed his tag. <laughs> oh, great balls of fire. I want to talk about a Dory Jackson real quick before we get into the Daniel Jones extension mess. Or not extension, I should say restructure mess, because we've talked about the giant salary cap. We talked about the issues before. Uh, but one of the issues I didn't, we haven't really talked about is Dory Jackson. Of course, he is a free agent. Um, Dory, when he came over from the Titans, the rest of the league pretty much laughed at us because we were the only team decided to give him a raise uh, coming off of an injury plague season. Um, did he play up to expectations? I, I think he played to about what you thought he was going to play to in, 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 in the time here with New York. Um, he played in only 13 games in 2021, 10 games in 2022 and 14 games in 2023. So he did miss, let's see, seven, 10, uh, 10, 13, he did miss 13 games in three years. He, he, you know, he, he's a guy that makes the tackles. He's had a lot of solo tackles. He had 49 and 40 last year with only 14 assists and 11 assists in the previous years as well. He wasn't a guy that came with a lot of big interceptions. He only had two, but he was a guy that you could put on the other side and not have to worry about, you know, the co- quarterback going after him too much. I mean, he is a solid, I, I would say he's a solid second tier starter that most teams would love to have. And I think the Giants would love to have him back as well and and team up with a full year with Deontay Banks. Um, But can the Giants, can the Giants bring him in? Can they, can they wheel him in? Can they, can they give him enough guaranteed money or can they give him a salary to, to have him be part of this organization? I'm thinking the answer is going to be no. I think you got a guy that's 28 years old. I believe he's coming into his sixth year. 
he's going to be looking for some change. And and I and I understand that. I mean, I would be looking, you know, to bring in. I'd be looking to bring in some cash. I believe he got thirty. He what, was averaged thirteen million dollars last year. I mean, the over term of his last contract. So the last contract with the Giants. So he's probably going to be looking at something similar. He's probably going to look at something that's going to uh, uh, put him either. I think he's probably going to be looking anywhere between. Uh, if you know, if you're if you're a Dory Jackson. You think about this, you got uh, three years, 39 million uh, from the Giants. So you're probably going to want to have something similar. So um, I would probably think he'd be looking for an, a, a salary increase. So, you know, you could probably see him around three years, 45 million, uh, which would give him over a base salary of over about 15 million plus some prorated bonuses. I mean, it's just not there for the Giants. It's really not because we've talked about the New York Giants salary cap situation. You have all the capologists out there that are that are denying math because <laughs> math is math. I, I kept I always think of the scene from The Incredibles too when Mr. Incredibles trying to teach his son dash math and he's sitting there go why did they change math? Math is math. Math is math, guys. And I've said this a million times before. I've been saying this for the last three years that we've been doing this show, and we have been like I said, one of the things I can always claim on this show, and I've always said it is the fact that we have always been right about the salary cap. We have predicted the doom of the salary cap. It's a salary cap. We predicted when it was going to happen, where it was going to happen. Hell, last year we even said at the beginning of the season we were probably going to run out of money by midseason, if not a little after. And, of course, that's why we ended up trading. King of the almost sack. Because you can watch these numbers. You can see it. You can put it in a spreadsheet. You can watch it fluctuate. You can, when you get all the contract values, you can see exactly what's going to go on. That's how we're able to predict the salary cap. It's, it's not me being omnipotent. It's not me being Tim Stradamus. It's not being any of that thing. It's just being the fact that math is math. And the Giants' salary cap situation is not the greatest in the world right now for a, for a team that will have limited a number of players under contract. You currently have anywhere between twenty six to twenty eight million, and you can you can bring in some more money. You're you're going to have six. Well, the way, it's already inclusive with the six million dollars with the rollover we're having twenty twenty three. But you also remember that this, this is what the rule of fifty one. And we we have been spouting the rule of fifty one for years. I just love the fact that people have finally you know took the slow train around the bend and started figuring out what the hell that meant. But at this point in time, you got to remember, you have, you know, you we've talked about this. You have almost forty percent. Or I, uh, of your, I would say like 37% of your roster tied up into three guys or four guys. Oh no, technically three guys. I'm sorry. Jones, Thomas, and Lawrence. So there's going to have to be some restructure going on because of the fact that you, you could probably manipulate the cap. You could probably make some moves to get rid of some guys, but there's not a lot of big time moves. You I mean, you can get little, you get rid of Glowinski and bring in another $6 million. You could, t- I think Darius Slayton's probably going to be on the way out. Cause you can also save $6 million with him as well. So you already picked up $12 million right there. So you add that on, let's just say it's 30, because I don't want to do basic math today. That's $42 million already that you've gone over. Um, you know, you, you have other contracts that you could probably, you're going to have to manipulate a little bit, because honestly, if you take a look at your contract values, you have 47, 23, 22, 14, 11, and 8, at 8 and 7. So you have a large, and then you got a lot of guys after people like banks that are making under $2 million and under. So you have a large portion of your cap. You're cap heavy again. I mean, I don't I don't understand this. I, I don't understand a lot of things that Joe Shane does with the cap. Maybe it's not him. Maybe it's his capologist because Logan Ryan thing still bugs me. I think we only saved seven. When we cut him, I think it was like, what? So we saved 790000 But we could have saved millions if we used one of our two post-June 1st designations on him. But the problem was they would have strung it out through that one the, the first year and the second year, and that's why he didn't want to push money out into the second year. That's why he didn't do it, even though he would have saved more money in the long run. But then he does it with contracts. That we, we're not going to get into that because it just doesn't make sense sometimes the things that he does. But your biggest albatross, your biggest bugaboo, your biggest issue on this entire roster is that $47 million cap hit sitting right in front of you. That's Daniel Jones's contact. 16, $69 million in dead cap number. I mean, I mean, you 
the smart money would be you probably only have about 38, 40 people under contract. Once you move around from some people, you're going to bring in some guys from the draft. We also remember, even though if you're even if though even if you're allotted like eleven million dollars in your in your salary and your rookie salary, it's not fully that eleven million dollars is not fully taken off your books because only about three to four million dollars of that is guaranteed. The contracts do not come on the books until they are fully guaranteed, not fully guaranteed, but the contracts do not come on the books for the rookies after like round three until the season starts and they're on the roster. Uh, so you have to manipulate, you have that money you can manipulate in the beginning now, but it's not until the season starts that you need to have to worry about that and exponentially. But the problem is you need to find money. You need to find cap space. I'm seeing the same pattern again. I'm seeing you're going to go out. You're going to try to spend some money in, on the offensive line. You're probably going to try to find rival receivers. You may need safety or two or even a cornerback because then you're going to have to go out and find a way to get this money, and make it happen. Yes, you can, you know it's funny. You could move on. You could restructure a part of Andrew Thomas and Dexter Lawrence's contract. Those two contracts to bind is a cap hit. And I love this. Think about this. That cap hit is forty five million between these two players. Here's a big issue. You have one player that's at forty seven million. That's something to think about right there. And you can always go down the road again, like I said, of converting some of that money to guaranteed bonus money. Um, but here, here's the issue in that. I forget off the top of my head because it has been a long couple, six days. Uh, I forget the exact percentage you can convert per year off a player's contract. I'll have to look it up again. I, I, rem- I used to remember what it was. <laughs> I was smart till the dog showed up. Uh, so you can make those things happen. But then at the end of the day, you also have to remember you still have Isaiah Simmons, Dory Jackson, Xavier McKinney, Saquon Barkley sitting out there as free agents. And they are, they are, I mean, you have three guys in Jackson, McKinney, and Barkley who are a huge part of your team at times. And you could say that Isaiah, Isaiah Simmons could be even a larger part if you lose excuse me Xavier McKinney. You're not going to you're not going to tag Xavier McKinney because the number is just too crazy to tag McKinney. So the logical expectations would be to tag Saquon Barkley, give him the twenty percent raise, but then you don't know if he's even going to be willing to accept the tag. The numbers just don't work out, guys. And then you have the maturing contracts of Kayvon Thibodeau and Evan Neal. And also, you then you will start having the maturing context of the a contract of Deontay Bags in two years, um, and then you're going to be moving forward even more with the larger scale contract in reference to Bobby Okereke. Uh, Okereke has only got 11 million dollar cap hit against a 17 million dollar debt get cap number, so his mon- number is manageable. So you're not going to even touch that. So here's the thing: if you look at, it, you're not going to touch. You get the only contracts you could touch is Jones, Thomas, and Dexter Lawrence. You could move on from Darren Waller. It's a $14 million cap hit, but you're going to save $7 million in the long run. You're not going to touch a Karake. You're not going to touch Kayvon Thibodeau. You could get rid of Slayton. You're not going to touch Gano. You could get rid of, you can't get rid of, um, well, you can't get rid of Gano because he's got a $9 million dead cap number against a $7 million cap hit. Um, you're not going to get rid of Evan Neal. You're not, you could get rid of uh, Nacho, but you're only going to save about a million. You're not going to get rid of Banks. Jackson's already gone. You're not going to get rid of Wondell Robinson. And then all you then you have all these other guys making $2 million. It's poor cap management again, guys. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The basic math numbers just don't make sense with the talent that we have. And I think that's what we need to look at. I want to thank everyone for jumping on the live stream yesterday. It was a lot of fun. We had Big Dash Nose and R0B. Big Dash Nose. And, of course, you, if everyone knows Big Dash. If you don't, go subscribe to his channel. Go find R0B. He's out there always doing those Twitter spaces. Uh, so that's always a lot of fun. We're going to have a big show on Sunday with a special guest. Just not going to tell you who it is. And, again, don't forget the like. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to ring that bell because you want to know why. That would be awesome.